Thanks for all of them. get that. Uh, one of the things that really sticks out in my mind, and you know, you talk about highlights, it wasn't a highlight, but I'd only been in the job, I was only just coming on 19 years of age. I got to Williamstown and I'd been there about three weeks and I was on an afternoon shift uh, and our senior sergeant who uh, was in full uniform had a heart attack and died in front of us, in uniform. And that stuck in my mind, it still has. Um, to see your own OC laying on the floor dead in his uniform, then you have to escort him to the wall and watch him cut his uniform off and lay on the slab. That, uh, that stuck with me. And of course, uh, in those days now, there wasn't the welfare that we've got now. You know, we fight to go in there and escort the body in and then just get back to the van and keep going. And I just go and have a few beers. And I think that's probably what set me off on the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> probably a, a work going for you. <laughs> anyway, but, and that's what I was, I was going to thank Phil later, but I probably will now. The association and the force itself today those wonderful things uh, for welfare and that at the start. As I say, you know, if I just have to get back on the van and get all of it, none of this how you're going or how you're feeling, you know, but, uh, whatever. Um, perhaps another another uh, thing that stuck, sticks in my mind was the Russell Street bombing. I was the sergeant of Brunswick at the time, and I was actually on the D24 bat phone about to ring a burglary through. And when the D24 operator rang, he started to uh, take the details of the call and he went, oh shit, you could hear this noise and it went blank and about 10 seconds later he got back up and said, oh, what's going on? And he said, oh, our uh, windows have just been blown on in. So to the credit of the D24, they only lost about five seconds of air time the whole time, so that sticks with me. Um, when I first joined the job, I, I had a number of goals that I set myself and the first one was actually to get into the police force. And uh, it wasn't that easy because the school I went to uh, at Old Town North, um, I and the school didn't get all together and I got bad, uh, bad ratings. And then um, I went to another school and did all right and finally got in. So from the time I got into the police cadet school, the time I graduated as a constable was 20 months. And it was hard going in those days. So that was my first goal, was to actually become a constable. My second one was then to become a detective which I did. Um, I worked at City West CIB, Russell Street CIB, and uh, Moody Pond CIB. And then my next goal was to get promoted to sergeant and then senior sergeant and uh, get my own station, which I did. Flemington, and Altona North, and of course, uh, my ex-friend, uh, Roscoe, will tell you over there uh, at the IVR. And my legal team will be contacting you all the time. Anyway, uh, when I became a senior sergeant, um, I enjoyed the job. I was a senior sergeant for 18 years. Now, I'm sure I could have got promoted to uh, inspector a lot earlier than I did, uh, but I didn't want to. Um, I worked, uh, I don't want to mention people in particular, but I will mention a few people. I worked with uh, Mick Mulaney, who's here tonight, he was my subject at uh, Flemington. And we had a pretty good team going. And in those days, you only saw an inspector when there was a complaint or uh, when there was a problem. And we used to feel sorry for the inspectors who used to come to our police station. We had nicknames for them, and they were very derogative, and uh, we didn't think much of them. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, I don't want to be part of that. I want to stay in the police force and actually do police work. And I know that's terrible to say, but that was the situation at the time. And then um, when uh, they regionalised in about 2000, I thought, well, and they put inspectors in charge of what were these districts, and which then become local area command. I thought, I can do this, and I did not compromise it, but that's another story. But the time, the time, probably the best time of my life was when I was a senior sergeant, and what I really got a kick out of was, uh, even as a sergeant, training and mentoring staff. I look around now, and uh, I don't want to embarrass people, but uh, I see Bernie Jackson, who is now a superintendent, sitting in the audience, and his lovely wife, Bronwyn. They were both uh, trainees at Brunswick when I was a sergeant. And uh, Bronwyn, I must say thank you for all those nights we slept together. <laughs> <laughs> on night shift. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it, it really makes me feel good that Fernie's now a superintendent. And uh, you know, there's other people that aren't here tonight, but I can name hundreds of, of people who were constables when I was a senior sergeant and so forth who now have rank me. And uh, I think that's a great thing. So, um, one of the other highlights uh, of my career was about 11 years ago. My son Cal joined the job. He's a senior constable up at Dimboola. It gave me a real thrill to actually be at his graduation parade and uh, handing his ready. That was a big thing. Um, low lights. Have I had any low lights? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, in 40 years, you meet a lot of people on this job. And 99% of the people that I've met in this job have been fantastic, but there is the 0.01% who are just dickheads and malcontents and whatever who shouldn't be in the job. Um, one of the highlights I had was having to arrest uh, uh, a colleague of mine for shoplifting when I was on duty, and uh, you know that put me back a bit. I, I, I felt, uh, uh, you know, I used to think highly of the fellow, and that put me back a bit. Um, Mick Maloney and I, when we were at Flemington, we ran a pretty good show, but we were both pretty devastated when the uh, internal affairs or ethical standards or whatever they were at the time came and raided the station, and it turned out that. One of the fellows at Flemington was the, uh, the king pin in the window shutters uh, scandal. That was a bit of a low life for us. And it just tells you that, you know, you think you know what's going on and you've got control of the place, but I can honestly stand here today and say, and I think Mick could, that um, we had no idea what was going on at the time. Um, look, I just, uh, you know, I said I wouldn't mention people, but it's pretty hard not to. Uh, you know, I look at the table in front of me here, my first station after Russell Street was Williamstown, and I think it was the best time of my life, you know, as a young fellow new in the job, and I've got a table full of people here, I haven't seen some of these people for probably 30 years. What a great place it was, Williamstown, we, we, we put, uh, worked hard and we played hard, uh, they were great times, great people, and it's good to see you here tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And to my old friend uh, Bernie Poole over there, ex-councillor of Williamstown, we used to love pulling him up after he's been to the pub and he, had, he used to drive a, a charger, brand new really a charger, so we'd take him home and then drive his charger around for about two hours. <laughs> put a, put a, you know, he wanted to know how come we had an extra 3,000 miles on his clock at the end of the year. They were, they were the great days. And uh, I can go what I want. I'd like to particularly mention Hans Worcester, uh, was, and he's here tonight, he was my first sergeant at Williamstown. Uh, it was correct to your person when he was there, but uh, not, 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 a, not a bad work. And, uh, and then he, he followed me to City West CIB. And it was always my aim to get, I used to tell him, it was always my aim to get promoted higher than him in Rex, so I could give him a hard time, but he, he, he retired before I uh, achieved that. Um, you know, then um, you look around, I went to Mooney Ponce, I went to look over here to fellas like you know, Andrew Balsilli and uh, Mick Prowse and uh, one over there, and then if I forget a name, please don't go across from me, but they were fantastic days. Um, you know, under the old tail and horse table there, Mick Willan, uh, he was my inspector at the time, he would not get a better man, Warren Green, um, and uh, Fiona Webster. And I just want to mention that now before I get, forget, is that the unsworn staff in this job, we take them for granted. They work uh, tirelessly uh, for very little pay. Uh, they work a lot harder than some sworn members who are in cushy jobs. And they don't get recognised the way they should. So to all the unsworn staff in this uh, room tonight, thank you very much for your support and keep up the good work because uh, you deserve it. Anyway, uh, I go around the room, I have a look at the, uh, the old Flemington days where I see, uh, you know, Paul Cliff up the back there, and, uh, you know, people here. And uh, to my current uh, workplace, uh, good to see you all here. And uh, I promised I wouldn't ramble on like you, uh, Mick Millen. I said to Mick Millen I wouldn't ramble on like he did, but he said, well, but I'm, I'm probably starting to, am I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and to the family, uh, what station is it? I'll be at. Um, as I go mention my ex friends uh, over there, John Woodman and Ross. And what concerned me so much about 
He's faithful as the, most of it is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I particularly uh, would like to not go astray without thanking Wayne Barclay and uh, uh, Mick Baker for uh, setting us up here. Thanks to the Backers Mars crew up there for uh, whatever. And uh, thanks to the association, Phil. We go back a long way, as you said. Uh, I know there's an EB on, and I've butted you up, Bernie, so uh, I didn't know you were in charge of the EB negotiations. But look after us. Uh, it's like a bit late for me now, but I think I didn't want to make a political speech, but I'm leaving the job with 444 sick days. And uh, I think it's time, Phil and Bernie, that you sat down and started to reward people like me with a good work ethic. Even if you give me $10 for every sick day, that would be uh, a nice little holiday, wouldn't it? So, uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm just checking my, uh, if I forgot to thank anybody, I want to I wanna thank you. Uh, uh, once again, my family, my mother, my father, they'd have liked to have been here. Uh, I said it with a bit of emotion. Cool. Yeah. Uh, to the lovely wife, Linda, thank you. And what Jack said is very true. Uh, I used to come out in terrible moods sometimes, and, uh, and I know I used to take it out on the family sometimes. And I've only uh, known Linda for about 20 years, but she's had a 20 year Polish career with me as, as well, and it's, uh, it's not easy. So, <coughs> I'm going to, uh, you know, as I say, they, someone said that I've gone from being a uh, rooster to a feather duster. <laughs> I forgot to, uh, warm, I forgot to uh, mention you. My mother's here, and uh, she used to always ask, who's this uh, Warren Green? And I thought you were in charge of the police station at Melton North. Uh, I call myself, yeah, but. Warren gets his photo on paper all the time. So. <laughs> and he's been chasing the job for years, he's trying to get the job at Baker's Marsh. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble on. How long have I been going for? Please one the back. Hey? Too long. Too long. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get you off. Hey? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to uh, just say. Uh, what the door said, this is the end. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.